What's up, everybody? Sunday night recap. All right, we got big injuries to Austin Eckler and Nick Chubb, but I guess not that bad. It felt like it was going to be one of those horrible injury days, and it feels like that's all we talk about. Forget it. You know what? I'm be more positive. I'm be more positive. Holy cow, the Cowboys are great for fantasy. Their defense stinks. Their offense is incredible. Every Cowboys game, get in on it. Sorry, Michael Gallup, fantasy managers. You know, even almost kind of sorry Ezekiel Elliott, fantasy managers. Like, hold on to the freaking football and stop fumbling and dropping passes. Yeah, but didn't he make up for it with what he did in the passing game? Mm -hmm. Eight catches. Eight catches. 71 yards, 120 total yards, yawn. No score. Negative two for the fumble. Mm, Such a stiff. Uh, (laughs) No, no, He's no Joe Mixon. It's no Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon, he did it. Hey, right. What the right hell, Kenyon the, Drake? When are you going to do it? Write the headline for Week Four. Um, like I think that the debate we're going to have within the community is uh, sell high on Joe Mixon and Odell Beckham. Uh, yeah, all I, eyes you, on you Ohio. That? What's that? <laughs> do you agree with those? Well, those are, that's two of our uh, 12, believe it or not. So let's find out later. How's oh, that for things? Okay, okay. Well, I got to buy or sell for, for Joe Mixon. And I, you know what? Maybe I'll throw, I'll throw, I'll do those in buy or sell just to make Heath have to pivot when we talk about those games a little bit later. You are such uh, an angry little man. How about, you know what? Let's do something fun. We've never done this before. Oh, no. Let's do something that's going to make Heath mad, rightfully so, on the air. Heath. We're going to talk bad about beer. I screwed up. Can you make your levels a little bit, a little bit louder? <laughs> Why would I, Adam? I want this podcast to sound as yeah, good as possible. Why butt. would I ever act annoyed by wanting to check? I mean, please tell me when my volumes are right. I think it's okay now. I'm a pain in the butt with uh, with mic checks. And Adam, remote. can you make sure your mute button works? Yes, then I can. use it. Okay. Okay. Um, hey, listen, watch uh, what? Well, actually, wait before. Yeah, watch us on YouTube. YouTube.com slash fantasy football today. I'm wearing glasses. That's weird. Who's uh, who's your top waiver wire priority? We'll do that. We'll get that out of the way and then we'll recap everything from Sunday. Why is it weird to wear glasses, Adam? <sighs> <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Who's your top waiver wire priority? I honestly haven't even thought about it yet. Like, I'm seriously, still I'm going to say something. Everything. Yeah. Um, no, no troll, no, um, nothing. It might be Teddy Bridgewater. And that is a statement on how Teddy Bridgewater played today and a statement on what the like actual other than streaming ads look like. And a statement on the fact that Teddy Bridgewater gets to play the Falcons on a short week next week. Mm, that's a good one. It's a good one. Uh, and I think, uh, I think okay. I'm going to like him better than Kirk Cousins. Cousins playing at Seattle. Yeah. I don't really buy that Seattle's defense is suddenly great just because Ryan Fitzpatrick turned into mm. Ryan Fitzpatrick, which is tragic. Called. Fitz tragic. Uh, you it's know, tragic. Let, let me tell you, he's had 24 or more fantasy points in now seven of his last 10 games. Mm-hmm. So he has been pretty consistent. Who? Ryan Fitzpatrick. Okay. He's two of four this year, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. At New England, bad. And 18 points, not a total dud because he had the rushing touchdown. Yeah, it's kind of a dud. It was disappointing, obviously. Devontae Parker came through. (laughs) Should you drop Preston Williams? We were talking about, yeah, I think Preston Williams, Michael Gallup, Jarvis Landry, A.J. Green, Kenyon Drake, D.J. Moore, Brandon Cooks, Mike Asicki, T.Y. Hilton. What are we doing with these guys? Uh, Dave, did you have a waiver wire priority or shall we move on? I mean, I guess it's uh, Darrenus Johnson from Cleveland, but I'm sure someone will bring up somebody else over the course of the next 45 minutes. And I'll say, Oh yeah, that guy. I've got one. Yeah. Who T Higgins. Maybe 55% rostered, I believe. And, uh, man, I don't know what to say about AJ green anymore. Hard to make excuses at this point. Uh, we, I mean, we might get to the end of this, um, podcast and it might be Greg Ward. Oh, sure. Yeah. All right, well, that game is in the second quarter as we record. All right, let's go to uh, some buy or sell. Buy or sell. You can't trust any Rams running back. Daryl Henderson, eight carries for 22 yards. And Malcolm Brown, nine carries for 37 yards. He also had five catches, Malcolm Brown. They're at Washington next week. Buy or sell. You can't trust any Rams running back. I 
like the way that like we do certain things for the show, Dave, like we sit in winners mm-hmm. and, winners and I do the believe it or not thing. Yep. And then Adam comes up with this new game called buy or sell, where he just tries to cover all the topics we're planning on covering <laughs> later in the show. <laughs> he didn't really come up with it. Now it's been around for over a decade. Buy or um, sell. I came up with it last week. Last week was the first time on oh, the Sunday. Show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe um, on Sunday. And I bet. I bet we've done buy or sell on Sunday before. Yeah, um, get out of here. Yeah. Uh, look, I'm selling it. I, I thought this was a weird game for the Rams. Totally weird. And Henderson did not have a good game, and Brown with the catches is just going to send everybody, you know, into a tizzy and wonder, well, what do we do with these guys? Well, you're playing against Washington next week, and their D line isn't going to be fixed by then. There I, might I, be. Right? I, uh, I don't think so. I, I think Henderson is still someone that I'm going to look into as maybe more of a low end number two running back. But this this was an uncharacteristic game based on what we've seen from him this year. There will not be a Rams running back in my top 30 this week. And if Cam Akers is back, there might not be one of my top 36. Oh, gosh. If Cam Akers comes, uh, this was so disappointing. Daryl Henderson did nothing to lose the job. I, I just want to point, and he didn't necessarily lose the job, but to not lead uh, as a runaway in touches, I just want to point something out because, you know, Heath, you make fun of me a lot. Hmm. The Giants run defense actually played pretty well each of the did last you, few weeks. Did you, how much of that game did you, this was the other really weird part. Like Daryl Henderson, you're 100% right. I don't think he did anything wrong that I saw. We may find out later there was something that he did miss some assignment and it all makes sense. Um, and the few times that he carried the ball, I thought he looked, Malcolm Brown looked like a undrafted free agent who like maybe got cut from an XFL team before joining the Rams. Uh, I, I, we were, what we were doing mean? the switch stream good tonight, watching the bills game. So I didn't really see much of this game. He, he did like earlier like week one, Malcolm Brown what looked surprisingly good. Right. Week four, Malcolm Brown looked like Malcolm Brown. Well, I that's don't good know for why Henderson, Henderson could get the ball. I don't know. I would assume that it would be a good thing for Henderson because then the Rams coaching staff would say, he's got more juice. We need to give him the ball more. We didn't do that. We only gave him nine touches, right? Eight carries, one catch. Does that sound right? Somebody, yep. anybody? Yep. Everybody screen. Eight, catch, eight carries, one catch for, for Daryl Henderson. You know who actually looked good in this game for, for spurts was Devontae Freeman. He did. He had a couple of, I mean, he's probably going to look like Trashola in a month, but so, he looked pretty good. At focusing times. though on the Rams running backs. Yeah, let's spend three more minutes on this. Yeah, all right, we're good. I think we've answered it. All right, buy or sell number two. No, no, it's not Russell Wilson or Patrick Mahomes. Dak Prescott is actually QB1. I mean, I, he's got to be in the conversation. He and it goes back to uh, what you QB started one, the podcast right? with. He probably is, but you just, you look at the Cowboys and their defense is terrible and they're going to be having to chuck it all over the place most weeks. And they've just got so much firepower on offense that they can keep doing this. What, what matchup is going to come along where you look at Dak Prescott and go, uh, he's only going to get me 300 yards and two touchdowns this week. I I better look at my other options. I I mean, it, it could be when next week they face the Giants in three weeks they face Washington. It could be when they play a bad offense because Prescott has thrown in his last three games 47, 57, and 58 passes. He is on pace for 804 pass attempts. <laughs> it, can't, it can't keep up, but they are the fastest offense in the NFL. So I fast wanna, pace. He's also on pace for 6,760 passing yards. Yeah, no, that can keep up. That one, I, I think that would be a record. That would be <laughs> great. Be, can you look that up for us? Yeah. Well, well look, you, nobody's <laughs> taking anyone over. The ball. It's like, yeah. <laughs> you know, I I think that if you've got Dak, you're a happy camper in yeah. fantasy. Though the one thing I would concern that concerns me is the state of the offensive line in Dallas. It's starting to deteriorate, not to the point of Philadelphia's offensive line, but they lost another starter in Joe Looney today. And we know that Tyron Smith gets hurt a bunch. Lyle Collins isn't coming back anytime soon. Uh, Could be a problem. Could be a problem for Dak. All right. Buy or sell. Also, buy or sell. I did not look at the winners and losers you guys guys sent me yet. So Clearly. Yeah. Buy. Buy. Uh, buy, Buy that. Buy or sell. Joe Mixon is a must start every week. Three touchdowns, 181 yards, 31 touches, 
Um, huge game for him. I think he scored 42 PPR fantasy points. That's how many points Tom Brady scored in six point per passing touchdown leagues. He's at Baltimore, then at Indianapolis. Buy yourself. Joe Mixon is a must start every week. I think I think you've got to lean toward buy on that. Let's just say hypothetically, you drafted Joe Mixon and Kareem Hunt, and you picked up Mike Davis Davis off waivers. Did I get James Robinson too? Yeah, got all three, oh, all, all, right. all four of them. Hey, and yeah. Mixon plays like the Ravens next week. Not, yeah, that's going to be tough. Yeah. Th- that'll be tough. He might be more of a flex for that game. Uh, I really need to go back and take a look at what the Bengals did to really set him free. It, I, um, Jacksonville really about a quarter and a half just completely disappeared. Like looked like what we expected from Jacksonville in the year 2020. That was awful. I see. Okay. Uh, I think not, not to say like not to take anything away from Joe Mixon. It was a good performance, but there were some clear breakdowns where it was yeah. just easy, easy, the touchdown easy. Touchdown run up the right sideline was ridiculous, wasn't it? And I said <laughs> that's when I said, okay, this is the Jaguars' run defense that I expected to see. I just I didn't understand how they had been so good for three weeks. But let's talk about maybe it's just a bad day for them. Maybe they are good. I don't know. But let's talk about Mixon's trade value right now. And and um, Jonathan Taylor, Joe Mixon. Oof. Like that, remember last week when I said buy or sell, Jonathan Taylor has been kind of disappointing and you're like, Oh no. Yeah. Man, uh, this was more I, disappointing. I take, take Taylor. I think I might take Mixon. I think I'd take Taylor. When we looked at Mixon's schedule, we know that the next couple of weeks are going to be tricky for him. But one of the games was Indianapolis and Darius Leonard, who's the one of the best linebackers in the league got hurt. And we don't know what his status is going to be moving forward. That would change that matchup. And then after their bye, they've got two matchups against Pittsburgh and a week 17 game against Baltimore. And every other matchup, it's like a dream. It's like walking through the botanical gardens and you're smelling all the flowers and the roses and you just can't get over how amazing things are. I mean, the Giants are in there. We'll see how good they are by then. But there, there is a very promising second half finish for Mixon on top of what we got in week number four. Okay. Um, but his offensive line still stinks. Yes, it does. Okay. So, uh, Joe, well, I'll just do a few more. At the, like last week, I think I convinced myself that it was Robinson, but now it's Joe Mixon or, or James Robinson. I don't want to be swayed by one week. I'm going to say Robinson. I'm going to stick with Mixon. And you know what? Like, looks Robinson didn't have a huge game, but he was he was 107 total yards. That's 90 or more total yards every week for James Robinson, plus 14 catches this season in four games. One, it's three, really four. It, it's stuff. impressive. Yeah, it's good stuff. Like, it, it's nice to see Doug Marone do something right. Uh, buy or sell last one. Dalton Schultz is better than Hunter Henry. Schultz with 72 yards and a touchdown this week. Henry, with his worst game of the year, he had been um, right around, well, here's yards in four games, 73, 83, 50, and 39, no touchdowns this year. So buy or sell, Dalton Schultz is better than Hunter Henry. I can buy it. It's another game with eight targets. He's had two of those in his last three. Well, eight or more targets, I should say. Don't like the catch rate. 50% this week was nah. But uh, eight catches in his last two games, the touchdown every other week. The offense that he's in is fantastic. Yeah. He's, in? he's here to stay. Yeah. Okay. Heath, Schultz or Henry, rest of season? Man, this is a really disturbing performance from Hunter Henry. Like this, For me, this is more about Henry than it is Schultz. I think Schultz is going to be a low-end starter. I don't really believe that he has more upside than Henry, but I'm pretty worried about the Chargers in general. So um, I'll say Schultz. I'm not that worried about the Chargers in general. Henry, just four games, no touchdowns. He's, he's, he's providing a safe floor in PPR usually. He's got five catches in all but one game. I don't know. Maybe this was just a really bad game for Henry going up against Tampa Bay. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I, I, Justin Herbert likes to throw it deep. He likes to air it out. And he was really impressive today. Yep. We'll get to that. We'll get Absolutely to that. was. Henry's still good. I just think Schultz can be a little bit better. Well, I mean, look, Dak Press got through fifty-seven times today. Is that what I said? And and uh, Burr and uh, sorry, um, Burr. I already forgot his name. 
the quarterback. Dalton the Schultz. No, the Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert. Or were you thinking of Terod Taylor? No, I was going to call him Joe Burrow. He threw 25 times, Justin <laughs> Herbert. So it's just, you know, it's just what it is. Uh, Austin Eckler, he's going to be out several weeks with a hamstring injury. And uh, still with that, I mean, the Bucks' run defense is suffocating. But gosh, the running backs were terrible for the Chargers today. But um, Heath, what's your take on the Chargers' backfield right now? Do we need to go get Justin Jackson? I think we probably should not because I want to use Justin Jackson, but Joshua Kelly fumbled again in this game and he's a rookie and that's twice in four games. And Justin Jackson might be one fumble away from the lion's share of the work on the chargers. And he was, he was bad in this game, but he does at least like the one area where he could help out a little. And he had two catches in this game. Kelly had three. Um, he's got some experience as a pass catcher. So Jackson should be rostered. Okay. Um, the Browns, we don't have an update right now on Nick Chubb, but do you think that uh, that there really will be two running backs worth rostering there, or is it the Kareem Hunt show? I think their philosophy is to use multiple running backs. But will and it be worth fantasy rosters, roster spots? I, I think you got to speculate on Johnson. I think Johnson's the guy and not Dontrell Hilliard. Hilliard only had five carries in the game, and I don't know how many of them came late. Johnson, uh, I, be, I believe Johnson was the next man up after Chubb went down. I think Johnson had like the the carries on like the final drives. Probably so. Looking at it earlier. Yep. But well, how many? But like, is Kareem Hunt going to get twenty touches a game? 18 he could. Touches. He could. Eighteen to twenty. Yeah, he's uh, and like unless this groin. I think they held back a little bit today because of the groin. Um, if the groin's not an issue, he's a, a, I think he's a top two back the rest of the season. Top two? Come on. Like, yeah. I think if Kareem Hunt had not been there, Nick Chubb might have been a top two back. But, uh, are you putting him ahead of McCaffrey? I don't know when McCaffrey's coming yeah. back, so I would have to right now. You're putting him ahead of Kamara. And you Zeke. can't put him ahead of Kamara. Kamara Zeke I think you can put him ahead of Zeke. And can you put him ahead of Dalvin Cook? Zeke has, Zeke has like 23 catches through four games. He does. Can you put him ahead of Joe Mixon? Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook. I would definitely put him ahead of Joe Mixon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was hey, my, like, he, he's got a great opportunity here. But honestly, I hope this doesn't happen. I hope Nick Chubb's fine. I hope yeah. that, that uh, Nick Chubb is good. And um, they're a really interesting team. They're three and one, and that's that's all. It's exciting. AJ Green got dinged up. Uh, don't didn't he wasn't serious. He was clear to return. OJ Howard, though, he ruptured his Achilles he's out for the season uh Gronkowski mm. still only one catch um and Howard had a really good game do you think Gronkowski gains value here does this help him in, enough where we're saying all right you got it. don't drop him keep him for another week yeah he's 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 walking the plank but he's not off the plank yet I want to go back to Kareem Hunt for a second because you guys really kind of scoffed at me Kareem Hunt's running back seven right now and Nick Chubb's been mm-hmm. there the whole time you think it's going to be worse? It, it's you. It's your... Oh, okay. Whoa, whoa. He got two rushing touchdowns today. Nick Chubb missed almost the entire game. So he did not... He was not there the he whole time. He was running listen, back he, 12 last, through last week. Okay, listen. that's a big difference between 12 and 7. It's about like, the same as the difference between 7 and 2. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just don't understand. Like, We don't know what they're going to do with Nick Chubb. We know what Zeke's role is. We know what Dalvin Cook's role is. Why would you put him... Well, I'm sorry. What we're going to do with Kareem Hunt? We, First, we've we're, still, we're, he was the number one back. running back the last time he was a feature back. No, it's Kareem not. Hunt. No, he was not the number one. He did not finish number one that year. I he believe he was number one before he, when he got hurt and Damian Williams he, took over, correct? He was close to it if he wasn't. Or he had like 11 touchdowns in as many games. Or maybe he, he wasn't had more. number one know. per game. I know that. Okay. Well, whatever he was, he was pretty damn close to number one. So I get where Heath is coming from, but I still can name two other running backs, if not three that I'd rather have ahead of a that, chubless That's fine. Hunt. That's a Be lot back. different than what the response to my ranking said. Like, how could he be top two? Well, <laughs> maybe he's fourth. Yes, exactly. He's okay. That's, well, it's ridiculous to even, like, come on. Uh, it, it is a silly conversation. He's obviously a stud. LaVisca Chenault left in the fourth quarter. Um, Kenyon Drake had an injury, not serious. His performance, on the other hand, pretty serious. Oh, God. I, we can get into that when we get to that game. C.J. Henderson left with an injury in the first half. That's Jacksonville's cornerback. 
uh, rookie cornerback. LaShawn McCoy, ankle. Darius Slay limped off Sunday night, but he came back in the game. Darius Leonard left with a groin injury. And Golden Tate and Jalen Ramsey um, brawled. And I still have not seen it. So I'm going to look that up. I, I mean, it would be shocking, I think, if there are not suspensions. Yeah, and they maybe if, I'm wrong, but I don't think you're allowed to to fight like that, even though it's after the game on a football field and not get in trouble. No way, especially, especially with COVID, they're gonna be pissed about this. And uh, right, well, they just got done playing football against each other. I, I'm, they, I'm not sure. No, I just don't think like. Uh, no, I'm. It's, okay. Either way, with or without it, with or without it, it's bad. Be, yeah, and there could be suspension. I'm sorry. I'm looking at um, watch. I'm trying to watch it. Well, all right. We'll you know see. what? I, I, I watched it before we went on, on the podcast today, and I don't think it's like it's I'd rather see them in the octagon. Let's go. Tate okay. Ramsey from UFC Island. All right. Let's see who these winners and losers are. We already talked about them. <laughs> <laughs> Dave's uh, winners are Joe Mixon and Justin Herbert. Okay. Let's talk about. Justin Herbert, Dave, uh, 20, 20 of 25. He's 35% roster, 20 of 25, 290 yards, three touchdowns. That gave him 28 fantasy points at Tampa Bay. Um, he has now scored 23, 16, and 28 points in three games. Uh, is he? Uh, is he? Would you rather have Justin Herbert or Joe Burrow? I'd rather have Burrow. Okay. But I was impressed with Herbert. And he's got the Saints next week. The Jets after that, the Dolphins after that, the Jaguars after that, the Raiders after that. Nope. Yes, that's the schedule. Yep, that's it. That's a gorgeous schedule. Then a bye, then Denver. And then things are not not terrible, honestly. I mean, Buffalo and New England in back-to-back weeks, you won't start them, but the dude's got to be on a roster. He was, he was really impressive. I love the cannon, the way that he was just chucking it deep and uh, – you know, one of the things I was worried about with him was that when the moment gets too big, I feel like he wilts a little bit and he, he loses control of his accuracy. And I don't know if that necessarily happened today. I, I Maybe just, at the very end. I want to ask, and I'm not suggesting yeah. one way or the other. <laughs> That's exactly what happened at the end of the game. I'm sorry. It is, it, it, to correct second myself. time um, with the Chiefs like, game too. Yeah. We not like we don't think Todd Taylor is going to start any more games now. I don't think they – how can they go to Terod now? They've lost Herbert's every done. game Herbert started. Well, I guess that's true. I mean, not that, that – he. I'm not disagreeing with anything about him looking impressive or being better sure, for fantasy sure. or having a brighter future yeah. long term. I mean, term. listen, that's a really good point. I'm losing sight of what they're thinking about, which is, well, Herbert's been great, but we're not winning games. Yeah, That would be bad. I, that would be bad for – that would be really bad for Keenan Allen, I think. Okay. I just like to try that great of a quarterback anymore. No, he, he, well, no. It, you'd like to see them go, obviously, to play the kid. Play the kid. Hey, Pete you, you would, but also, I, I mean, I, I, and obviously I've always had a soft spot for Trod, but the guy got stabbed in the lung by the team doctor. You probably shouldn't lose your job for that when the other guy hasn't won any games. Yeah, I guess so. When is he going to be good to go? Taylor, though. No, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not saying that he'll be back next week or anything. I'm just saying, do we think that he, they're now going to take his job during this situation? That's probably a, a grievance. Is that enough for you to not put Terod Taylor among your waiver claims this week? Or I'm sorry, not Terod Taylor, Justin Herbert. Like he shouldn't um, be the top waiver claim, but if you're, you got to start looking at bye weeks for your quarterback. You should have a backup quarterback now after what we've been through over the last 72 hours got to have a backup if you don't have one. And Herbert's got a nice schedule coming up, and we don't know when Terod's going to come back. Go get Yeah, him. I mean, he would definitely, like, he'd still be well behind Teddy and um, Kirk Cousins for me this week as a streamer, I think. I mean, we're way ahead of ourselves now. Mm-hmm. But, and I'm not generally adding quarterbacks to stash for possibly two weeks in the future. Okay. okay. I, I'd like to move on to, to Heath's winners. Uh, Robbie Anderson. Okay, so this is the oh, fourth yeah. time in four weeks. Every time Robbie Anderson has a good game, we're going to put him in the winners. <laughs> but he deserves it because he's he's changed. He's not the same type of player right now. Or at least he's not doing the same things on the field. And it's making a huge difference. And he had, did he have 100 yards? He had 99 yards, eight catches for 99 yards. 
Heath, Robbie Anderson is definitely a winner. Is he the best wide receiver on this team going forward? You son of a... Seriously. <laughs> like, I've literally already tweeted out the believe it or not for this game to because this is the believe it or not for the article. And so I name him... Good gracious. <laughs> Sorry. Great minds think alike, Heath. Um, yeah. I think... Um, why don't we do the believe it or not part first next week? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm kind of just leaving this TBD. Um, it's DJ Moore. Like if, when you ask that question, I think it has something to do with DJ Moore too. Um, Robbie Anderson. I believe that he is a top 24 wide receiver rest of the season. I believe he is someone you should start every week. Um, I, as for DJ Moore, I don't really get it. Um, what's happening. He's still averaging eight targets per game. He's still averaging nine yards per target. Um, but he's catching like 50% of his targets because they're deeper now. And I, it would be really weird if that's Carolina's plan for the entire season is to use Robbie Anderson as Julian Edelman and use DJ Moore as Tyler Lockett. Will um, it make you sad to know that DJ Moore was wide open in the end zone when Bridgewater threw it to Bonathon? the touch I mean today. that doesn't make me happy Dave no it I'm doesn't sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm sorry um I believe he was possibly also tackled inside like the five today so it I now it has to be inside the two to be an almost touchdown well I mean he's no T.Y. Hilton but yeah I I don't I would say no that Robbie Anderson's not the number one on wide receiver on the Panthers the rest of the season but I have very little ground to stand on they're like co number ones but it really hasn't been that close. I mean, right? I mean, more. Well, had DJ had big more game. targets coming into this week, did he not? So I that's all so. I heard about on FFT. Yep, he did. And but coming out of the that, week, that's the other thing. Like he had half of the team's air yards were going to DJ Moore. Um, that generally leads to really good production. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's a Bridgewater thing. Maybe you know you want the guy. That, we know we know the book on Bridgewater, right? He well, I can also work. tell you that yeah. it's it's also a defense thing defenses were probably on DJ Moore first saying we got to try and contain him and Patrick Peterson was on him today when I watched him play I noticed that he did better against zone coverage than man and my guess is that Robbie is better against man than zone because of his speed that's a guess I didn't watch closely enough with Robbie but it, it could be as simple as that from week to week the type of defense they go up against and they also still like to spread the ball around a bunch of receivers or part of this mix mike davis is part of this mix and when christian mccaffrey comes back he'll be a part of this mix so um they yeah yeah, yeah okay last thought there dj moore has actually faced really good number one cornerbacks i can't tell you how much he's faced them in each game but he's faced tampa bay the chargers and the cardinals so maybe next week is like somewhat of a Joe Boo week for him at Atlanta. Not to say you're dropping him, but no. we really need to see something right. from DJ Moore. All right, let's do. Uh, oh, your other winner is Antonio Gibson. That's a great winner. Yeah, That's a great winner. Um, a little bit more involved in the passing game and made a couple of enormous, enormous plays in the passing game. Received several carries at the two yard line or nearer to the goal line, and then he got stuffed one time. And they brought in Peyton Barber, and Peyton Barber got stuffed, which was great. Um, Seventeen touches, the most we've seen in a game. I I think like, and it might be too late because he scored the last two weeks. Three weeks. Now, my, I, I think the explosion might be coming for uh, Antonio Gibson. Oh, I thought you were going to say, I think now's the time to sell. It's because he has, he's on this little touchdown runner. Do you think, you think he's a kind of a reliable, let's just keep him, use him as an RB2 kind of guy? If he kept getting the work he was right now, I think that, like, well, th- before this week, then yeah, he's a, just a flex. But 17 touches is a different story. If he's up to 15 touches per game and four of those are catches, He's a starting running back. It's not just that. It's career highs across the board, catches and yards, and he had a 40-yard reception. Heath, I think that's the one you were talking about. Yeah. Even if you take that away, he had three catches for 42 yards. That would be also a career high for him, even without the 40-yard catch. So 
I hope, dear fantasy gods, please let Antonio Gibson continue to get more receptions and receiving yards, and he will be a solid number two fantasy running back with a chance to be even more than that because of the touchdowns that he's scoring behind that still bad offensive line. All right, let's go quicker here on the losers so we can get to all the games. Ready? Losers are for Heath, uh, Daryl Henderson, and Michael Gallup. Uh, so you already said you you know you're probably not going to have a Rams running back in your top. 30 next week and if acres is back you might not have one in your top 36 as they will face washington next week as far as michael gallup goes uh, it is unbelievable i mean dak prescott threw for four for 500 yards and 58 and attempts even, yeah couldn't even give 30 of uh, 30 well, 500 yards to gallup what the hell it, you can get into a lot of trouble trying to find patterns this early in the year because this this data is all it's really small st- sample size still but Michael Gallup targets on a per game basis, five, five, nine, five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I'm not going to expect any nines. <laughs> I'm, I might expect some more fives. He's um, been out targeted by Amari Cooper in every game. He's been out targeted by Ezekiel Elliott in three of four games. He's been out targeted by CD lamb in three of four games. He's been out targeted by Dalton Schultz in two of four games. I think, really, I think I think I yeah. think I know where he is on the pecking order in Dallas now. Well, 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 well I'm not sure out. because he's been out targeted by Cedric Wilson each of the last two games. Good God! You know what he is though. He's the <laughs> no, no, no. He had guy. more than than Wilson in week three. Look, hold on, guys. So okay, you're right. I'm sorry. Let's talk oh, about dear. his. Uh, let's talk about his his trade value, right? I guess I, I'm sorry. Just yes, Gallup. I, I want to. Do you want to? Do you want to see what you can get from him, or do you want to hang on to him? I bet there's people who are going to cut him. Yeah. I um, what could you give for him? Nothing. T.Y. Hilton, A.J. Man, Green. They're they're all going to be potential chopping block guys. All three of them, and so, I think you. I think the case can be easiest for A.J. Green, and it's going to be a little bit harder for Hilton, and maybe not so much harder for Gallup. Hilton, why not Hilton? So at least A.J. Green's and Gallup are on teams that pass the ball all the time. That's Phillip, true. Philip yeah. Rivers threw 29 passes today, which was like his second most of the year. But T.Y. Know? Hilton's tar- targets by game look very similar to Michael Gallup's, even though he's the number one there. Nine five three five for T.Y. I, I think that it's interesting because there are not obvious great players on the waiver wire. It doesn't seem right now. But if you had all three of them on your team, Sorry, T.Y. Hilton, A.J. Green, and Michael Gallup. How would you rank them in terms of, well, how would you rank them Goodness. rest of the season? How would you I, rank them rest of the season? I would not very highly. Hilton would probably be first. Gallup would be right behind him, and A.J. Green would be third. I, yeah, I would, I might go, yeah, no, I'd probably go, I'd probably go the same order. And here's the one thing, when I brought this up on the Twitch, Adam, What if the Bengals end up realizing by the trade deadline, you know what, we're not going anywhere and we're not going to pay A.J. Green. And there are some teams that are offering a pick or two for him. Maybe we move him. What kind of pick is somebody offering for him now, though? Right now, it's not going to be anything more than a day three choice. It's not going to be a first round pick, which is what I think Cincinnati would think he's worth because Cincinnati lives their Their ownership lives in a completely different universe than the rest of the National Football League. But I, I could see them saying, look, we've got T Higgins. He's going to be great. We've got T Y Hilton. He's going to be great. Let's just, let's get what we can for this guy who we're not going to keep. Okay. Maybe it happens. And maybe that's enough for you to keep AJ green on your bench instead of cutting him. All right. But I'm not saying that's the right thing to do. I I don't know what the right thing to do is with AJ green, to be honest with you. It might be to cut him. (laughs) I don't think anyone's really hearing me today. Uh, (laughs) Dave's losers are, uh, they are AJ Green and Tyler Higby. Okay, Tyler Higby, out of here. He he's definitely on the chopping block, and it hurts because I mean, week two he scored all those touchdowns. I'm thinking, here we go, Tyler Higby breakout. It's beautiful, but three or four games, uh, he's got terrible numbers. Not good, not good for PPR or non PPR. You shouldn't feel obligated to start him any further. And I honestly, I I'm not certain that if he were on the waiver wire, people would race to get him. Dalton Schultz for sure ahead of him. Hunter Henry ahead of him. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you drop him for Mo Ali Cox or Rob Gronkowski? 
Uh, I'm not ready to say yes to either of those. No. Okay. Target share for Ali Cox was disappointing today. He only had two. I don't know how much he played. Trey Burton. Man. Is that man. what happened to him? Oh, there were so many incompletions to Trey Burton, it seemed like. <laughs> I, don't know. I know the coaches love Trey Burton. Five targets for Trey Burton. Ali Cox is season high in targets in a game is six. And he's had three or fewer in the other games he's played. All right. Uh, that would be our winners and losers. Start, sit, drop real quick. Did we do my losers? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Didn't I don't we? remember. Daryl Henderson. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Come on. Sorry, right. that was a while ago. Yeah. Uh, start, sit, drop. Jarvis Landry against the Colts next week. What are you talking about? He threw a touchdown. Yeah. Sit. Just he's a he's probably going to be a sit next week. Kenyon Drake at the Jets next week. Sit. Oh come on, it's the Jets. He might be able to find his way into the end zone in that game. He's a he's going to be a number two running back. Okay, uh, Brandon Cooks. He's a drop. Drop. Preston Williams. He's a drop. Drop. Mike Kosicki. He's a. Are you going to start him against the 49ers? Mm, I don't think I would want to. It, Drop. The tight end waiver wire, though, is so barren that I just don't see how I... Unless I have, you know, a guy that I'm starting every single week. I can't imagine I'm dropping Mike Kosicki. The, like I said, the only guy that's out there is Dalton Schultz, and we know that Dalton Schultz is good, so I just feel like he's already rostered in the leagues that he needs to be rostered. He'll probably go up a little bit. Like 10-team leagues will probably get him. Probably get wow, him. next week is the test. Mo Ali Cox gets the Browns. Oh, yeah. That's probably going to be Trey Burton. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, let's take a look at our leaderboard right now. Top five players at each position. Six point per passing touchdown leagues. Dak Press got one. Hey, how about Tom Brady? Five touchdowns, 42 fantasy points. He was terrible in the first half. Terrible. Let me read the rest of the read- okay, uh, fine, leaderboard fine, fine. real quick. I mean, you know what I'm going to say after that. but Teddy Bridgewater, three. And then Josh Allen, four. And a long tie, a four-way tie for fifth place. Matthew Stafford, Lamar Jackson, Justin Herbert and Kyler Murray all scored 28 fantasy points. Kyler Murray scored 28 fantasy points and he threw for 133 yards. Mm -hmm. And last week he scored like 25 or something and he threw three interceptions. So Mm -hmm. it's nice to have the floor. Yeah. Uh, I have the floor right now. Dak Prescott, Tom Brady, Teddy Bridgewater, Josh Allen, Matthew Stafford, Lamar Jackson, Justin Herbert, Kyler Murray. So we got big games from Stafford and Brady. Uh, and Dave, which what's more significant to you? Uh, the Brady one, just the fact that he was able to really, I think, find his best form of the year in the second half. He was connecting. He, the touchdown to OJ Howard was great. He was connecting with Scotty Miller. It felt like this was the first time this year that he really had done that. He had already been connecting with Mike Evans, um, but it, it just looked like he had full command of the offense and his arm wasn't letting him down at all. And his receivers weren't letting him down. Drops had been a problem and they were still a problem in this game. Uh, Ronald Jones had a bunch of drops. Keyshawn Vaughn had a ball thrown behind him, hit him in the hands. Anyway, he couldn't hold on. I I think that Brady did find his form and kind of optimistic that he could end up finding his way back into the regular top 12 mix toward the back end of the top 12. How about Stafford, Heath? Do you feel like Stafford is a top 12, back-end top 12 kind of guy? Yeah. I mean, that's where we had him at the beginning of the season. I think that's where we had him this week, and that's where he's going to reside. There might be a couple of weeks where he sneaks into the top eight. There might be a couple of weeks where matchup forces him out of the top 15, but he's a he's a low-end number one, high-end number two type of guy. A quick update. Colts tight end snaps. Jack Doyle, 63%. Trey Burton, 50%. Mo Ali Cox, 46%. And then only two catches, two what targets, one catch for a touchdown. All right, running backs, top five running backs, Joe Mixon, Dalvin Cook, Melvin Gordon, Chris Carson, 16 carries, 80 yards, two touchdowns. Oh, Latavius Murray, man. Latavius Murray uh, just ahead of Kareem Hunt. But actually in PPR, Antonio Gibson, Mike Davis, they both outscored, and Alvin Kamara, I think, as well. They both outscored Latavius Murray. But 
Uh, how about we talk about Latavius Murray? And I think he actually has more carries than Alvin Kamara. This, uh, well, he did coming into this game. Kamara had five more, so it's pretty even. But is Murray anyone that you'd ever feel comfortable starting? No, Not comfortable, the- but he's a nice he's a nice band aid, um, and underrated as a as a high end flex or a bi week replacement as a number two running back. Okay. Give me your thoughts, Dave, on Mike Davis. 16 carries, 84 yards, and a touchdown, plus another Dude. five catches for 27 yards. As long, as long as Christian McCaffrey is out, Mike Davis is a must-start fantasy running back. He's doing a terrific job in this Panthers offense. The O-line was down two starters today, and uh, he still was able to put it together, and I love that he's got a role in the passing game. I'm getting a tiny bit nervous that the Panthers might say, okay, when Christian's ready, he'll play, but he's not going to get the same type of workload that uh, we were giving him before because Mike Davis has earned a chance to play a little bit. Well, I I think that's legitimate. They were talking about that on the broadcast today when I was watching the game there. And he, like, he looks, he's playing well. Um, But they were talking about a burner, you know? No, no, but he's, he's playing well. Yes. Okay. Wide receivers, Beckham number one. What a game for Odell, man. Yeah. Five catches, 81 yards, two touchdowns. It feels like I feel like we haven't seen a game like that from him in three years. And DJ Chark was number two. Great game for him. 88 catches, 95 yards, two touchdowns. Amari Cooper scored for the first time today. Uh, for first time this season today. He's number two in PPR. He's number th- well, he's tied for second in non-PPR. CD Lamb. Uh, Michael Gallup's fifth, right? No. Just, Co- just Cooper and Lamb, sorry. Mike Evans up there as well. And then right behind them, Adam Thielen. Traquan Smith caught two touchdowns. Uh, Heath, you look at this leaderboard, Beckham, Chark, Cooper, Lamb, Evans, Thielen. You know, good it, name there. <laughs> it was nice to see the targets for DJ Chark. He had more catches in this game than he had targets in week one and two combined. Um, they, they were really spreading the ball around too much. And it was kind of the, it was kind of late in this game when, when Minshew started going to Chark more and, um, the connection there is just so much better than he, except for maybe LaVisca Chenault, the connection there was really good at all as well. We, we need some consolidation in Jacksonville. Like let's give 15% of the targets to James Robinson. Let's give 25% to DJ Chark. Let's give 20% to LaVisca Chenault. And forget about the rest of those guys because uh, Chark looked like a number one receiver in this game. He absolutely did. And the first touchdown that he had in the back of the end zone where he had the toe drag was like, you'd expect that from like a six year NFL veteran. And he just third game this year in his third year. I don't know if he's making a, a catch like that in a toe tap like that last year. Definitely not in his rookie year. I, I, what I'm worried about is that Minshew will notice that teams are going to start to shade toward Chark. And that's kind of what was happening earlier this year. And that's why the targets weren't there for him. But he's, he's only missed on one target this year. He's, he's off to an outstanding start. I hope you're right, Heath. I hope they start figuring out a way to force feed him targets, scheme him up in the offense because he's a playmaker. Mm-hmm. CD Lamb, he's having a really good rookie season. Would you rather have CD Lamb? Or Daryl Henderson? Lamb. I think I'd rather have Henderson. Interesting. I'm not, gonna, have- I'm not going to be totally deterred by one weird game. Okay. C.D. Lamb or Jamison Crowder? Lamb's more fun. <laughs> Lamb's more fun. A lot more fun. Wow. Lamb chowder sounds so good right now, by the way. Really? Um, how about tight ends? Yeah, I would try it. Mark Andrews, number one. You know, let me tell you something. I really, what, what, like, no, Lamar Jackson is not throwing more. He barely throws. And Mark Andrews was lucky. I mean, he's great, but three catches, 57 yards, two touchdowns. I think he had like four targets. Uh, They just don't, they don't throw at all. Dalton Schultz, number two. O.J. Howard, Austin Hooper, and so far, George Kittle at halftime has 89 yards, so that's good. Um, But we'll eliminate him, and we'll go with T.J. Hawkinson, who caught a touchdown. Two catches. Intentionally skip over Jason Witten? He must have done something. Why does he have seven points instead of eight points here? Who, Hawkinson? No, Jason Witten. 
Because I'm looking at a leaderboard that has him behind Hawkinson. No, I'm looking at I'm looking at leaderboard. Witten is at seven. Hawkinson is at eight. Hawkinson had a touchdown. I believe he had a two point conversion. Ah, that's exactly what it was. The old two PC. Yes. Um. There were. Let's see. There were one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, seven tight ends who had less than twenty yards and a touchdown. Hawkinson, Witten, Donald Parham, Ali. I love Donald Parham. Great. Ian Thomas and Jordan Thomas. So <laughs> those are useless. Let's talk about the top four. Andrew Schultz, Howard Hooper. Heath. Um, I mean, it was good to see Hooper get going a little bit, but that's like that's kind of the type of performance he would have to have pretty regularly to be useful in fantasy if he's only getting 30 yards in his good game. Yep. Mm-hmm. Do you share my fears for uh Mark Andrews? I, um, no, the answer is no. Well, no, I do like from a strict philosophical position. I do. I think the rules of regression and efficiency do not apply to the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah. But man, they're just not throwing the ball. It's less than 30 pass attempts. And and I'm much more worried about Marquise Brown than I am Mark Andrews. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Exact way to say it. Andrews is Lamar Jackson's number one receiver. Uh, Marquise Brown almost touched down today, by the way. And let's yeah. get to the games. We will take a quick break on fantasy football today. Come back real quick and uh, recap every game. Tampa Bay 38, Chargers 31. Heath? Believe it or not, the Chargers will not have a starting fantasy running back until Austin Eckler comes back. I feel like I need to look at their schedule before I say I don't believe it. At New Orleans? No, I already ran it down. I did it when we were talking about Justin Herbert. So then what do, what do you need? I don't believe it. I'm going to start Josh Kelly. It's not going to be with a ton of confidence. Correct. Yeah. Getting in uh, Josh Kelly or Miles Gaskin next week? Gaskin's got the uh, Niners. Niners. Is that, that, that what it is, the 49ers? Yeah, at San Francisco. Um, well, sir, oh, gosh, Heath, I don't know. I don't want to make that decision right now. <laughs> it's just, I think yeah. I'd probably say Gaskin, but, like, that's an example of two running backs who yeah. might, like, by default be in my top 24. They might be 23 and 24. Okay, let's do a buy or sell here for the Buccaneers. <sighs> buy or sell. You can start Ronald Jones confidently, e- even when Fournette is back. So, so, okay. But when while Fournette's gone, I'm I'm good with Ronald Jones. I thought, other than the drops, I thought he played well today. Yeah, he he, he, run, he can and run. the sat line was good. I'm yeah, sorry. he ran really hard, had good vision. Like all right, next maybe game, his best game this year. Obviously, his best game this year. Minnesota 31, Houston 23. Heath? Assuming everyone's healthy, A.J. Green is the fifth best fantasy wide receiver in this game moving forward. Okay, Minnesota 31, Houston (laughs) 23. So... Ah, Was there a trade? Did did it happen? (laughs) Okay, you want to try again? What do you mean? What the hell are you talking about? Minnesota, Houston here. Not a, I not jumped ahead too early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There Was there not a... Oh, there's a header. You didn't put a space between Cameron Bray. I follow along in the notes, and you didn't put a space in the notes before this game. Oh, of course. So it's I Adam's just fault, jumped yes. down to the next game. That is my, that is my bad. That is my bad. Uh, no, but um, believe it or not, Justin Jefferson is a starting wide receiver moving forward. Uh, in three receiver leagues, of course. In two receiver leagues, I, I think for at least the next couple of weeks he is, just given the matchups that the Vikings have. Seattle and Atlanta are their next two games. I got to say, I mean, I really felt like I um, was right about this game and not starting Justin Jefferson because I said the thing that teams do against the Texans is they run, 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 run. They don't throw the ball enough. And Minnesota had the ball for 36 minutes and 31 seconds, and they threw 22 passes. So Dalvin Cook had 27 carries. Madison had seven. So that part I got right. But 
only five targets for Jefferson. He caught four of them for 103 yards. But you got to figure uh, Seattle and Atlanta, they're going to have to throw the ball a lot more. Yeah, five targets is not going to be enough to be a starting wide receiver. That that much we I think we would all agree on. Right, but it didn't look like a good game for him in that regard, and he came through. So, I mean, I feel like if they throw to him more. He had a couple of deep balls, and he's catching them. Really break out, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, buy or sell? Deshaun Watson is going to be a great fantasy quarterback this year. I'm not ready to sell it. I'll buy it. Game looks a lot different if Will Fuller makes that catch and Watson ends up with 30 and, points. You know, honestly, I would call that a catch. No. Yeah. No. You see the ball moving as it hits the ground. He had the ball while it's in, in his, his arms. hands in control. Was the John of it. Brown catch a touchdown today? Yes. Yes. Obviously. I agree. I yeah. agree with that one. Well, sometimes with plays like that, with the John Brown catch, I didn't hear an explanation, but sometimes they actually, there's like a rule that I didn't know about, like, um, you know, if you bobble the ball, like, I, I don't know. Like, like there maybe they were right about that on some type of legal technicality, but it certainly looked like a uh, like a touchdown. That was really weird. Um, so, yeah, sorry. Sorry to him. And Josh Allen ended up with a rushing touchdown after that. Uh, all right, real quick on this game here. Um, just how are you feeling about who would you rather have, David Johnson or Will Fuller? Fuller. I think I have to say Fuller. Team name Tuesday on a Sunday. Fuller wets the bed. There you go. You know the movie? Uh, I think you've made this joke before. I'm sure I have. Home Alone. Well, you should have remembered that, Dave. It's Home Alone. Yeah. All right, Heath. Cincinnati 33, Jacksonville 25. Uh, buy or sell? AJ Green is the fifth best wide receiver in this game. <laughs> in this game. Um, I buy it. I was impressed with T. Higgins, even though he had a bad drop. LaVisca Chenault looked awesome. Obviously, Tyler Boyd and DJ Chark are better than A.J. Green. I buy it. Dave, do you buy it? I think so. And if I if I really do, then I can't hang on to A.J. Green. Unless it's for the, well, I hope he ends up somewhere other than Cincinnati type excuse. It's almost an excuse. You can't start him anymore. I am glad that nobody gave up, that not too many people gave up on Gardner Minshew. He's still rostered in 78% of leagues. This is a reminder. You can have a bad game. He's now thrown 40 or more and then come back from it. He's now thrown 40 or more passes in three straight games, and he has scored 24 or more fantasy points in three of four games this season. So that's really nice to see for Minshew. He's going um, to be a, a top 12 quarterback at the end of this week, isn't he? 24. I don't. For the season. Oh, 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 oh. Probably. Yeah, probably. Unless Dan is Daniel Jones ahead of him, Heath? What do you think? Uh I'm I'm keeping track of their points per game. Um so far it's not for honest disclosure, I started Daniel Jones in a two quarterback league over Justin Herbert today. So Yeah. It's Jameis Jones. All right, Seattle twenty uh thirty one and Miami twenty three. Believe it or not, Devontae Parker is the only fantasy starter on the Dolphins. No, I don't believe that. He's the only one that you can confidently start. You got to think about it with Fitzpatrick. You got to think about it with Gaskin. You got to think about it with Gasicki. Yeah. I, I mean, look, Gaskin is 60, 66, 82, 95, and 62 total yards. With uh, how many catches now? 18 catches in four games. So in PPR, I mean, he's you could do worse. I don't know why he only got 10 carries in this game. Well, what's his what's his career high? 22 last week. Oh, he did. Yeah, he did 22 against Jacksonville, didn't he? You're right. Though if they're 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 one and three, he has seven to 10 carries in the three losses. He has 22 carries in the win. So yeah, that's that's pretty telling, I suppose. Um. Buy or sell, DK Metcalf is better in fantasy than Tyler Lockett. I knew this was coming. <laughs> um, so. Every week. I'd sell, but it's close. It continues to be close every single week between those two. Lockett was a big letdown. It, is, it, is it, though? Like, it wasn't really close last week, and it wasn't really close this week. How often are both of them 
going to be awesome in fantasy. Like last week, awesome. obviously, they both were. They went off. For the first three weeks, they were awesome. Yeah, I know. They? Or at least, at least good to very good. Okay. So but I'm talking up. awesome. It doesn't matter. You're starting these guys every week anyway. Yeah, it's a fun argument, but it's ultimately not really that important. Although, um, and again, it, well, again, though, sorry. Do you think when you're just talking about catches and targets, do you think that DK Metcalf is someone we should be looking to sell? And when I say this, I mean you ask for the moon. He has been awesome. He's a top five wide receiver going into this week. I'm sure he's pretty close after four catches, 106 yards. But he's probably averaging like 20 yards a catch, you know. So 25.2, I believe. <laughs> okay, sorry. So what what should we be asking for? Or just hold them if you want, I guess. Right. You could pair him with a lesser running back for one of the better running backs in fantasy, but not one of the elite level ones. Met- Metcalf and Mixon for Zeke. Would you do that? If you were ever going to be able to pull that off, first of all, I'm not sure if I would do that. And second of all, if you were ever going to pull it off, this might be the week to try and do that. Feels like an even. But I, I like Metcalf, man. I, I like the way that he fits in. And I think Russ is, you know, playing to be the MVP this year. Mm-hmm. All right. Next game Indianapolis 19, Chicago 11. Well, um, believe it or not, T.Y. Hilton is droppable. Oh, come on. Well, Adam, that's another one that's literally in the article that I wrote 400 words about before the do show what, started. Do what I, David Montgomery. Um, I don't have any thoughts about David Montgomery. Like it was a bad. Uh, no, I'll do the, the Jonathan Taylor one again. Believe it or not, it's a, I'm a little concerned about Jonathan Taylor being a number one running back. Like, How about Taylor has four receptions in the three games since week one when he had six? Ridiculous. Played less than half the snaps each of the last two weeks, and Naheem Hines and Jordan Wilkins combined for like 18 touches in this game. Ugh, stupid versatility oh, and more than using that. everybody on your roster. Or 18 carries, maybe. Carries 17 for Taylor, 18 carries for Hines and Wilkins, which was interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, I think you have to buy that. Like, you can't sell. You can't sell. Like, he, he's obviously going to be started, right? He was started. Taylor was started in 95% of leagues. I'm sure it's going to be similar most weeks, but. Lowered expectations. So sure. Why isn't he going off? I, I want him to destroy people. The, they're not <laughs> blocking quite as well as I expected them to. And he, on occasion, looks like the running back that we think he will be. But he's not quite in, at full speed yet, I don't believe. I, I don't know. It may be a rookie processing thing. Maybe. Maybe. But he does not look as special on the field as I think he is. I'm gonna say, and I don't believe that you sell uh, that you drop T.Y. Hilton. We already talked about that, though. I'm gonna say something here. I feel like, um, gosh, the like the elite players are just so much better than everyone else. But you don't have, you don't have a feel for our people's value. We haven't had any buys yet. Okay, yes, we have the Steelers and the Titans this week, but. I don't know. Like the, the guys like Jonathan Taylor or like Miles Gaskin, they're going to feel a lot more valuable to you soon when you are, when you have to start them. You know, Taylor is different. Like he's still a must start, but uh, I, I don't know what I'm trying to say. We haven't, we haven't really gotten the appreciation for how much depth you need to get through the season yet. Cause we haven't had any buys except for the unexpected buys this week. So I don't know. Maybe we'll change our evaluations of players once the bye weeks come. And once we really realize how much like, I'm not dropping. I'm not dropping Michael Gallup on the best offense on, on the, one of the highest scoring offenses in football. We're gonna need Michael Gallup if he's on waivers and my and like I, I'm in buy hell. He's the first guy I'm going for. I don't feel that way about AJ Green and Ty Hilton though. I think they might just suck. The Gallup was incredibly good last year. You guys feel the exact opposite, right? No. Mm-mm. I thought you had Gallup last amongst those. Uh, no, we had no, Hilton Green Gallup Green. Hilton Gallup Green. Okay. All right. Um, anything else from this game? Let's see. Allen Robinson with another big game. He's had nine or more targets in all four games. He looks really good. I think that's. I think that's good. Well, I think we should talk about David Montgomery. What the heck is David Montgomery? A low end number two running back who's going to disappoint against good defenses. Can you even call him a low end? Is he going to be a top twenty four guy for you? Yeah, he was. I mean, yeah, he was a top twenty four guy last year. He's probably been close to a top 24 guy this year 
He had a he had a really bad game. Like my what I should have said for believe it or not is Mitchell Trubisky is going to start Week Six against Carolina. No, no. they can't do that. They've already made fools their guy the rest of the season. They look okay. You started going back on it two and zero oh and made a quarterback change at halftime. If you're you go to Tampa Bay and he plays like this again, you're just going to throw your winning record out the window because you made a change once. No, I mean the winning record is gonna. I mean, it's already going downhill. I guess you're right that they can go back to Trubisky, but I don't. I, I think they realize that they're stuck if they go back to Trubisky anyway. Doesn't it seem obvious? It wasn't that, that good? Were, they were looking for a reason to get Foles in in the lineup. Like, sure, they, they want Foles to be their quarterback, right? But they, they're now they're like Jacksonville wanted Foles to be their quarterback last year, and then they saw him play quarterback, and they didn't want that anymore. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, Minshew is so much better than Trubisky. Anyway, New Orleans 35. The, the Detroit- coaching was ridiculous in this game. They only gave Montgomery 10 carries and they let Foles throw it 42 times. They kind of deserve to lose this game without trying to be a little more balanced. We're right back where we were last year with Matt Nagy when he was questioned about how, you know, why aren't you running the ball more? And he goes, I'm not an idiot. I know that I need to run the ball. Well, today you were an idiot, Matt Nagy. <laughs> uh, well, it's going to be tough to trust. Montgomery next week against that Bucks. For sure. But in a good sign, he did have three catches today in his first game. Without That's going to be his max in pretty much any week. Uh, but you'll take that. It's I think the back. better sign is that Cordell Patterson, I don't think he played a ton of snaps. I know he had three carries I don't and one catch. Like mm-hmm. I don't think he necessarily had a split share. Of he played snaps. 11 snaps. Thank you. Oh. Montgomery B. played way more. Shraggy B on uh, with his microphone. Yep. Turn, what does he get today? Are earbuds today? Shraggy Shraggy, B? Shraggy B on the microphone. <laughs> uh, all right. Drew Brees with 19 fantasy points. Big game for Stafford. What do we got for New Orleans and Detroit? Uh, believe it or not, Drew Brees is just not a starting fantasy quarterback anymore. Can we wait till Michael Thomas gets back? That'll help him. Yeah. That'll help him. Chargers next week, then a bye. But wouldn't then you schedules, say? Schedules, okay. Didn't you say that he had a good game, though? He threw 20. He averaged 10 yards per attempt. But he's had a lot of good games. He had 288 yards and three touchdowns last week. He's just not challenging downfield nearly as much as he used to. And defenses are starting to key in on it. And it worked to the Lions' advantage early. And then the Saints ran off 35 straight points on that sorry Lions Wait, defense. That? No, listen, Breeze can cobble together anywhere in the 17 to 24 fantasy point window every single week. I don't think he's got the upside to be a top five quarterback much often. Why are we judging him? Michael Thomas has played one game. Look, he can can still complete a bunch of 10 and 12 yard passes with Michael Thomas on the field or without him. Yeah, but that's what he's been doing for the last few years. I don't know. He he would attack a little more downfield before. A little, but he's always been a low air yards guy. He just got 90 yards out of Emmanuel Sanders and two touchdowns from Traquan Smith. And let's not forget, Latavius Murray scored two rushing touchdowns and Alan, Alvin Kamara scored one. He threw 25 passes today for 246. I don't know. I I, I don't understand all the heat on Drew Brees. I feel like he's, well, you could just say you don't believe it. Yeah, I know. Just to believe it or not. <laughs> Like I didn't say it. I just said it. <laughs> this is what happens to me when I do buy or sell. Speaking of which, but, well, okay, fine. How do you feel, Heath? But like, believe it or not, what was your Drew Brees is not startable? Something He's like? not a starting quarterback anymore. That's what I believe. You really believe that? That's what I believe. Okay. Well, I, and it's right. not. It's not. It's mostly not Drew Brees' fault. Um, it just takes twenty-five fantasy points a week to be a starting quarterback anymore. There's going to come. The bye weeks are coming. You're going to need guys like Drew Brees. Okay, on the other side, believe it or not, DeAndre Swift's time is coming in the next two. I don't want to get excited. I don't want to. I I don't know. (laughs) I don't know what what that that noise is. Was that a cat or kind of a kind of a kind of a chortle? Like a like snap your fingers and the gun type thing and wait and wink like yes kind of deal. Uh Yeah, there you go. All right. Yeah, I don't trust the Lions coaching staff to do what we want them to do here. Cleveland 49. It was nice to see Adrian Peterson plop into the end zone, though. Good plop. Cleveland 49, Dallas 38. Uh, Believe it or not, Odell. No, I can't do anything about Odell Beckham because we talked about him. Believe it or not, (laughs) 
We can't do Kareem Hunt. <laughs> believe we can't do Michael Gallup. Talk about everybody nope. in this game. We've t- yeah, we don't need to talk about this game. Next. Believe it or I believe that we do not need to talk about this well, game. Well, I mean the, the Browns when I had was believe it or not, Odell Beckham's a top twelve receiver again. If you wanted to I mean I I think that you can sort of predict good Beckham games because he's a good, really good player on a team that hates to throw the football. So when you see them in a game where the Cowboys scored 38, but it was a little bit different because it's not like they were trailing. Like don't, they but, right. We, so, so I don't, I don't believe he's a top 12 wide receiver. I, right. And I think we got a little bit, it was awesome and fun to watch. Um, but he scored on a reverse and a Jarvis Landry pass. Um, he also scored on something else too, but they yeah. threw 30 passes. So that was a regular game. old fashioned slant into the end zone. He just beats his man off the snap and got open. He was started in 78% of leagues. And that's, you know, that's kind of low. And I like, you know, Dave, what do you think? I don't want to, I think, I think right, if, sorry. if you can sell high on Odell Beckham and you go to somebody else in your league and say, look, he's back, he's going to be awesome. And you get the return of what you would expect from a top 10 type of wide receiver. You do it. Okay. Otherwise, you just start him. I, I think three of his next four matchups are going to be good. I view him similarly to Joe Mixon, and I, I think they're both number twos at their position. And if you could sell them as number ones, you should do it. Okay. How about Baltimore thirty-one, Washington seven? Um, man, I like. I guess I don't know what to say about Mark Ingram, but believe it or not, you got bailed out if you started Mark Ingram this week, and you shouldn't do that anymore. Believe it or not, J.K. Dobbins doesn't have to be rostered moving forward. Yeah, I, I don't see what's different between him and Alexander Madison, Chase Edmonds, Tony Pollard. He's, you're never, ever going to start him, at least not now. Like, we need to see some development here, right? You're not starting him unless Mark Ingram gets hurt. Or maybe oh, Gus right. Gets hurt. But again, Gus Edwards had more carries than either of them. Gus Edwards had more rushing yards than either of them. I, it's a maddening situation, but I would still want to have J.K. Dobbins on my bench. But I don't want like I do believe what I said. You you got bailed out if you started Mark oh, Ingram yeah. this week. Absolutely. You should not do that anymore. You got bailed out in week two when he scored as well. The question is, are you are you ever gonna feel comfortable starting as long as all three of them are healthy? No. Now looking at the game log here for the first time, J.K. Dobbins got a lot of work at the end. Um and Gus Edwards yeah, Edwards and Ingram probably split a little bit more equally. It Ingram wasn't just played like 14 set. snaps the whole game. Holy cow. <laughs> they just don't need him. <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, I wonder if Gus team. Edwards is a decent stash too, since he's been running fairly well. They're giving him playing time. At the very worst, he could be a desperation bye week replacement at running back. He is definitely the most disrespected running back to ever reach however many career carries he has at over five yards per carry. Yeah, probably. Terry McLaurin is awesome. Yeah. Better in PPR. I Bye. He's awesome. Mm-hmm. Carolina 31, Arizona 21. Believe it or not, Teddy Bridgewater is a must start quarterback this week. Falcons. Is that, is that his matter? Or is it the Seahawks? I keep it is up. the Falcons. At, at Atlanta. Dave? I think he's in the mix. I can't say he's a must start. Well, and, and, Sure, there are definitely five or six quarterbacks you will not start him over. It's more like a top ten quarterback this week. Look, I, I I might I might find him in my top twelve when I go through my process on Monday. This feels like such a trap. <laughs> <laughs> His fantasy points in four games: twenty eight, sixteen, and thirty. You know, Will Brinson brought up a good point. Seattle kind of looks sluggish. Arizona kind of looks sluggish. Both teams made long flights and played at one o'clock Eastern. And, um, you know, maybe that affected them a little bit. Maybe that made things a little easier on Bridgewater. just want to bring that up because that didn't really occur to me, and it should have. Yeah, I mean, it's just going to come down to the touchdowns and whether he's going to be a historically low touchdown guy or not. If he's not, then he's going to be a good fantasy quarterback because the yards are there. Okay, anything for Arizona? They pretty much are what they are. We talked about Kenyon Drake. Well, I mean, I I think Drake looks okay. I think his offensive line stinks. And there's been a couple of games now in a row where he's having a hard time getting to the edge. And when you watch chase Edmonds, after you watch Kenyon Drake, you see a slightly faster running back. Like Edmonds got some 
real acceleration to him. He can he he's got burst in a jiffy. I, I wonder. I just I wonder if there is the schedule coming up for for Drake. I think is good, but I think the Jobu game is next week, and I wonder if he's it's a Jobu game for the Arizona coaches as well. If I have Drake, look, I, here's how I feel about this. I either want to have both Cardinals running backs or neither of them. If I have Drake, I'll try and make a move to get Edmonds in a trade. Or I'll try and trade Drake for something sensible and maybe a little bit more than what he's been giving you so that the guy that's got Edmonds has both those Cardinals. And then you can just let him have the problem. Okay. But I, I do think there is room for Drake to bounce back in the next week or three going to try to calculate how many times Kenyon Drake has been tackled like inside the two yard line. I feel like it is a lot uh, on to two more games. Rams He's only had six in- carries inside the 10. Um, okay. Rams 17 giants. I mean, I just feel like he's always in around the goal line. He never gets in the end zone. 17, nine Rams over giants. Heath. I'll do a quick one that we don't have to have as much conversation about. Believe it or not, the giants are the absolute worst. The, 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 the zero Zero fantasy options. Um, I'm, I'm going to say I'm going to I'm going to say not. Well, no, no, maybe they are. I I'm was going to say the not. Jets are. Jameson well, Crowder is definitely Crowder. a good starting option. Oh yeah. no, the Giants are the worst, but I think that Evan Ingram is still going to because tight end because he's a tight end. I still think he's okay. He's okay yeah. in PPR. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, he had three and a half points in non-PPR today. I don't know how you feel about the Rams defense, but we knew, targets. we knew the four first four games of the Giants schedule were horrible. So, um, But everybody's um, going to beat them up. Their offensive they, line is they horrific. But the Cowboys are next week, so maybe they can show a pulse. Um, buy or sell. You better hope they don't. I don't know, dude. I'm sick. I'm so sick. You don't understand. Like people, Trevor is the, right there for the taking. Aren't fans of the team say that? I'm. So Why would they take Trevor Lawrence when they can get a really big offensive tackle? He. No, they'll take a wide receiver. I, I'm so sick of watching. We all like people who have root for crappy teams. We're so sick of watching our teams. Well, anyway. I just think with the Barkley injury, you might want to think about another running back. <laughs> <laughs> Cooper Cup. You know, 55-yard touchdown catch. Other than that, he had 14 yards. Um, and just the fact that there aren't a lot of targets to go around in this offense. They don't throw the ball. I don't know how you yeah. feel about it. Uh, I don't know. That's, not, that's true. They threw it 32 times today. Um, they, oh, weren't, they weren't very efficient at all. No. Other than that one play. Like, Robert Woods, five, five yards a target? <laughs> that's not... Um, bad game for them. Yeah, they just it was a well, they grinded it so. out. They grinded it out and they yeah. leaned on their defense. That happens sometimes. That's They're not at all how any of us thought the game would go. So, so, how would you rank Beckham, Cup, Woods? You just did full PPR, half PPR. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cup, Woods, Beckham. They uh, might be back to back to back. Okay. Uh, how about? Buffalo 30, Vegas 23. Um, believe it or not, Adam wasted $6 on Hunter Renfro. Uh, thank God for that final drive to save face. Five catches, 57 yards on eight targets. You know, Darren Waller had a much better game than I anticipated. Mm-hmm. You know what, though, too? It wasn't just him. Jason Witten scored a touchdown. Like they, so did Nelson Aguilar. It was they might just but... not be great against tight ends. They were great against one this year, right? I don't know, man. Higby, uh, and Gasicki. No, 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 no. Who was well, we... Milano got hurt in the middle uh, of the game too. Was the Jets. Never mind. Oh, he did. He did. That matters. But Ed, I, th- I think Edmonds is the better overall linebacker anyway for Buffalo. Look, if I, if you had told me that Renfro was going to get eight targets against a team that was giving up the fifth most yards to slot receivers, I would have expected a better game. He had five catches for 57 yards, and that sucks. And I feel bad about it. Um, if anybody listened to me, and uh, as far I wasn't trying to feel bad about it. Oh no, I I said all kinds of dumb things this week. Come on, I, you got you got to own up to it, right? Um, are there any? Do you feel like the Bills' offense is a a sell high offense, or or let's just have fun with it and ride it out? Ride it out. But usually, you use the term "ride it out" for something that's not going great. 
<laughs> ride the wave. This is going pretty great. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, thank you for, for all your time. Appreciate it. Long show tonight. Thank, thank you for the dedication. Uh, for Schrager, for Dave, for Heath, I'm Adam. We will talk to you tomorrow with another episode, and then Tuesday we'll have the waiver wire for you. See ya. Kittle. Want more of the Fantasy Football Today podcast and nonstop year-round fantasy advice? It's simple. Hit the subscribe button and hang with us all throughout the year.